So I want to make a little video on 300 Blackout. This is sort of a behind the scenes of the AA Target dueling tree. So this is the 300 Blackout ammo I'm using in that video. Uh, this is specifically a frangible 300 Blackout from frangiblebullets.com. Now, if you're not interested in reloading, they do sell the preloaded. This is the 110 grain. It's from LTEC. They sell it on the Frangible Bullets website. So this is going to be a little how-to tutorial on loading 300 Blackout and how I'm loading these frangibles. So we're going to get these out of the way. So first off, regardless whether you're going to load FMJ or frangible, you're going to need a manual. You're going to need to understand a manual, understand how to reload, and know the recipe. So we're just going to assume that you've already done that and you're ready to crank out some buckets of ammo. What you're going to need. So for dies, I'm using the Lee 3 die set. This has the factory crimp die in it. So of course you're going to need your brass. This has already been cleaned. I'm going to assume everybody knows how to clean their brass if they're watching this video. If not, hit a comment down below and we'll get you work through that. You're going to need your bullets. Like I said, these are the 110 grain frangibles. You're going to need your powder. That's the powder I'm going to be using is 296. You're going to need case lube. Definitely going to need some case lube. And you're going to need a scale and primers. I choose to prime rifle brass off the press just because it gives you a better feel of the retention. But if you want to prime on the press, you can. So definitely before you size rifle brass, you need to lube it up. You can choose to use a homemade mixture or some I recently picked up, which is really good. Is this RCBS case slick. So I'm only doing a small batch. So that's way too much, but normally you have a big bag of brass with a few sprays, shake it up. If you're going to dump them out, you're going to let them dry. Very important is to let them dry. If you don't let them dry, you're going to risk dimpling your brass, or you're going to risk actually getting it stuck from the lube still being wet. A good thing about this case slick that I got is it dries really clean. Where if you're using a homemade mixture or other ones out there, they will be really gummy and your brass will feel like goo. So now that we got these, we're going to set our sizing die, we're going to size the brass. So now we're ready to set the sizing die. Now normally, I would do this all progressively, but for the point of this video, I'm going to do it all here in station 4. So you want to back your lock ring all the way out so you have room. You're just going to screw this in all the way down until it touches the shell plate. Once you get a touch of shell plate, you're going to go one quarter turn more. Then you're going to set the lock ring. All right, now we're ready to size the brass. Again, make sure you've lubed it, make sure the lube is dry. So we're gonna go ahead and size the rest of them that I have. So now that we have sized brass, we're ready to move to the next step. But one thing I wanna to suggest to you right now, this could save you a lot of hassle, especially if you're loading a bunch, is get you a case gauge or get your rifle right now that you're ready to shoot them out of. Cycle this brass. If this brass doesn't chamber, then you know you need to reset this die or you have this die set wrong. Now, this is going to save you some time later on if you're having trouble with it chambering on a fully loaded round if it won't chamber. If it passed with just the brass, you know that it's your seating or your crimping that's giving you that issue. To where if you didn't check it, you may think it's that seating or that crimping issue. And you may be adjusting that die trying to fix them when really it was back here. If your brass isn't sized properly, it will not chamber. So this here is my Dillon 600 Super Swager. Now this is only if you've been firing military cartridges or you have brass that's been converted from 5.56. So this only needs to be done one time. Now if you keep your own brass and you don't add any more into it, you'll never have to do this step again. So all this is doing is opening up that primer pocket, allowing a new primer to go in easy. All right, now that we have the primer pocket swaged, there's tons of other options out there. You can, you can use a reamer, or if you buy commercial brass, or save your brass, you'll never have to do that again. So now I'm going to prime it, and like I said earlier, I prime off the press. And priming off the press is just going to allow you to feel 
if you've swaged it enough, because if the primer pocket is still swaged, you'll fill that primer bind up and it'll never go in. And the primer I'm using is the Lyman Easy Prime. There's tons of them out there. And you can prime these on your press. I just prefer a rifle to be done by hand. So now normally on this stage, I would use a powder hopper on the press using a rifle charge die. But since I'm only doing five pieces of brass for this video, really no point in setting it up. So the first step, whether you're doing it on the press or off the press, is you're gonna to wanna to make sure your powder throws are consistent. If you're not getting an accurate powder charge, there's no point in loading them. So now that I've checked it a few times, see that it's throwing consistent. Now I'm actually gonna prime the brass. Now what I like to do, after I've already tested to make sure it's done consistent, every 20 or so, put a piece of brass and I tear that weight out. That way I can just make sure nothing has changed. I'm actually gonna go one step further and look inside my cases to see if there's any differences in powder levels. So now that I feel pretty confident in it once more, I'm ready to add the bullets. Now we're ready to add the bullet seating die. Now on this die set, this does not crimp, this only seats. Same thing on that seating die. You're gonna run your lock ring all the way out, then you're gonna run your seating plug all the way out. You're just gonna screw it in until it touches the shell plate. Now once you get it to touch that shell plate, you're gonna move it in one quarter turn. Then you're just gonna hold it in and set that lock ring. So now we're ready to add our primed and charged brass. We're gonna grab a bullet. So as you see, this bullet has a cantilever on it. So what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna turn this in little by little and keep seating it down until we get it right there to that groove. And the reason we're backing out, because you can always add more, but you can never take it away with this die. And one more tip, this is a 110 grain bullet, but since it's a frangible, it's the same size as a 150 grain bullet. So if you go to the website, they suggest that you load this like a 150 grain as far as your charge weight. So all I'm gonna do here is seat it down. So all I'm doing is I'm gonna keep seating it and keep turning this in little by little until I get where I want it. As you can see, I'm right on that crimp groove. That's exactly where I want to be. So we're going to try one more. And there we go. So I'm just going to hit it on a digital caliper. So I'm getting 2.044. That's going to give me roundabout number to where I can check a few to make sure I'm staying consistent but with that cantilever there's really not much you can do wrong you're gonna see if it's seated way off just by where it sits on that cantilever so right now I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these all right so now I got all five of them with the bullets in them Seeing that they're all the same, seating depth, I'm ready for the crimp. So I'm just going to remove this die and I'll be back. Okay, now we have the factory crimp die. The way this die works on rifle factory crimp dies is this is actually going to push in and there's four collets in here. Those are actually going to squeeze together to crimp that case. Now the factory crimp die for pistols is a little bit different. Uh, if you'd like to see a video on that, I believe I mentioned it in my 9mm video if you want to go back and check that out is by far my favorite because it actually has carbide sizing rings inside and it'll actually resize the entire completed bullet. The brass, if there's any bulges, it'll actually knock them out and that's going to give you more reliability 
and a better chance of cycling and actually chambering in different guns. But with this die, same thing, you're going to move that lock ring all the way out. You're going to screw it in until it touches that shell plate. So now the suggested crimp is a half turn, but being these are frangible, again, if you go to their website, read their tips on them, you don't want a heavy crimp. A heavy crimp will actually start squeezing these bullets, and these bullets are designed to turn to dust. They're designed to break apart very easily. So you do not want them prematurely breaking. So I'm just going to go a little bit more in a quarter turn. Because you don't want these to break before they hit the target. If you're breaking these while you're cycling, it's going to jam your gun up. It's not going to be a good day. So now that I have that set, what we're going to do is run these through. Now let's actually get you in a top view and see exactly what this die does. Alright, so now I hope you can see this good. You see those four collets in there. Once I raise the bullet up, see how those are actually pinching together? Hope the camera picks that up. That is all that's doing. Because it's pinching right there at the end of it. Now this is a very light crimp, but if you do get a severe crimp on it, you'll actually see it leave. Four indentions all the way across that case. So that is it. Hopefully now you've learned a little more than you knew before on reloading the 300 blackout cartridge. If you have any more questions, shoot a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Again, if you're not interested in reloading them, frangiblebullets.com already sells them preloaded. These are the exact same as these. So these five that you helped me load today will be going into the bucket. And this is what you'll be seeing on the table at the range today in the doing tree video so if you have not seen that video go check it out i'll put a link over here on the left side of the screen as well as down in the description so you can uh, that doing tree is by far the funnest addition to the range that i've ever had i uh, do a lot of still target reviews here do a lot of target reviews here i've had a lot of nice targets but a doing tree is by far the funnest thing i've shot so if you have any more questions or comments please hit them down below or if you have a target that you suggest that i review and try out that you think will top the doing tree, hit it down below. Thanks for watching.